Good evening, BCPS, and welcome to our Cloud Academy Informational Night Overview Session. First and foremost, we want to apologize for the technical difficulties that we're having tonight. Uh, it appears that Zoom and Google Hangouts has had some issues today with a lot of school districts beginning uh, remote learning and instruction today. Uh, we've had some troubles linking it to our, our uh, YouTube page, and so we're having to record this session and posting it. So we're, we apologize that you're seeing this a little later than what you had normally intended. Um, we are so excited to be with you tonight, and I know that tomorrow will be a different first day of school than probably any of us have ever had. Uh, but we think it's gonna be a great first day, and we are excited about the first installment of our Bullet Cloud Academy. We're launching it under some very unique circumstances. This is actually a project that, that we've been thinking about and planning for for a number of years now, uh, but the COVID-19 epidemic or pandemic has caused us to launch this in the most unusual ways. And so tonight we're gonna share a little bit of information with you so that you know what to expect the, during your journey uh, in the Cloud Academy for as long as you and your students remain a part of it. There's been a lot of hard work that has gone into making this possible. Um, and you're going to hear from several of our district leadership team members tonight, talk about specific areas of the Cloud Academy. But I want to say none of this would be possible without the hard work of our building principals, our counselors, and our teachers. Lots and lots of long hours have been spent trying to prepare us for what we are ready to launch tomorrow. A lot of other districts that have gone to the remote or cloud setting or, or virtual academy experience have done so with box programs and uh, online platforms with teachers that are not a part of their school district or even packaged curriculum. We are priding this program in the fact that you're going to have experience with Bullitt County teachers using our standards, our curriculum, that is going to make it unique and personalized for your student. And so we are extremely proud of that and the, all the hard work that has gone into making that possible. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce our Assistant Superintendent for Student Learning, Ms. Adrian Usher. And she and some of the rest of our student learning team are going to take you through what to expect during the Cloud Academy. We hope you enjoy. Thank you, Dr. Bacon, very much. So um, a lot of these things that we're going to talk about tonight are really reminders. Tonight, we wanted to kind of provide a high level overview of information for um, our families in the Cloud Academy um, and really just to be reminded of some things that uh, were kind of a part of participation of being um, in the Cloud Academy. So just those few reminders is the homeschool. Your child is enrolled in their homeschool, um, even though your child might have a teacher that is from another BCPS school. Um, saying that, your child still has um, access to the programs and extracurriculars that would occur at that homeschool, um, even if your child does have a teacher from another uh, school building. Just a reminder about the adult learning coach, and I'm going to be talking about this a little bit later on because there's going to be some information that will go out uh, to our BCA families to collect this information, but it does need to be an adult 18 years or older, a little mistake there, or older, uh, must be accessible by the BCA student throughout the day to help as needed. Um, and then the semester commitment, just a reminder that this is a semester commitment. You know, one of the reasons uh, we wanted, we know there was a lot of our families that were uncomfortable with sending um, their child or children back in in-person. So this was really a semester uh, commitment. Um, and our semester, which would be the first two grading periods that will end January 15th, 2021. Um, and then the other uh, reminder about participating in the Cloud Academy is there might be some times that your child might have to come to a BCPS campus. Could be their home school, uh, could be another school building, depending on what that program is or what that class might be or an assessment. And part of that is really to provide if there's some certain programs or services that your child is enrolled in or needs, um, then they might have to potentially come in uh, to participate through that. 
And so those are, like I said, just the reminders that we originally had on all the information that went home previous or that went out previously and in the Facebook live session that Dr. Bacon and I did earlier on, um, but just wanted to provide you with those reminders again. Um, the adult learning coach talked about that. Uh, remember 18 years or older, uh, the BCA student must be able to have access to that person. There will be a short online training uh, for the adult learning coach to participate in. Um, we will be have we will send that out whenever we um, have all of our adult adult learning coaches. Um, we have all their names and uh, contact information as well. I'm going to let uh, Mr. Patrick Durham, he's our director of elementary ed, talk about um, elementary and what that will look like a little bit. We also have uh, Miss Rachel Bramlett Schomburg. She's here to will be sharing with information with you related to the Cloud Academy with middle school and high school. And then we also have Mr. Troy Cobb. He is our director of special ed and he will also share some information related to related to the cloud uh, for our students with disabilities and families. All right, good evening, families. Uh, appreciate you all being patient with us as uh, we had those technical difficulties. Uh, just wanna kinda of take a little bit of time to talk about some general uh, big picture items within the elementary. Not so much about some of the minute details that we'll have, but to think about uh, just how the day might go and some of those expectations. Uh, and I'm gonna start off with schedules and routines. It's uh, going to be really important that we that we work really hard to follow those schedules. We completely understand that going from summer into a uh, structured that structured environment and it being a virtual uh, model uh, is going to be different, and it's going to come with some growing pains. But we want to make sure that we are working to stay within within those schedules that we have, so that we are setting uh, good routines early, and that allows us flexibility later. So we want to really really focus on uh, uh, participating uh, fully in all of those scheduled events uh, as best we can. I, I know that there will be some hiccups along the way, but we wanna make sure that that is a primary focus for us. I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about uh, what a typical school day might, might be for some of our elementary students. Um, now you'll see on, on your schedules that you've uh, received or your teacher has talked to you about that it'll say nine to three o'clock. Uh, please understand that we are not going to have your students, our students, sitting in front of a computer in Zoom or Google Meets uh, all day for six solid hours. Um, that day we'll have multiple um, uh, varied experiences throughout, whether that be um, a focused uh, whole group or the whole class would be working together, uh, uh, receiving instruction and then breaking out into small groups or independent uh, time with that teacher or some independent time that they're, where they were not actually be on the computer. So we're gonna have a varied experience. Each day would be a little different, I'm sure, but then we'll have those scheduled uh, uh, big picture time. So reading block might be 60 or 90 minutes. But within that, we would be working through a number of different layers where our students are involved in different activities and different uh, uh, methods for learning and, and practicing some of the, the that instruction that they have. Also, I um, want to talk a, a little bit about with schedules and routines, uh, also uh, how important community building is for all levels. This is not just elementary, this is for all of our levels. We have planned and or have been working really hard to make sure that we're building community within our classrooms uh, in the virtual environment and also really working to support the social emotional uh, needs of our students. We understand that things are different right now and we're working really hard to not just support the academic, you hear that a lot, but we're really concerned about uh, making sure we're supporting our students' well-being. It's truly the whole child approach uh, in this and so uh, your students will have scheduled time each day where they're just gonna be interacting with their classmates and their teachers and there will be opportunities to build social skills and emotional skills, counseling, all of those things are, are afforded to all of our students. So I wanted to make sure I touched on that a little bit tonight. Uh, the next piece is communication. We all know how important communication is. We also know how frustrating it can be when communication is not readily available. And we know that um, along this process, we uh, communication is something that we want to continually increase 
And now that we are getting, uh, getting everything rolling and we've been able to reach out and speak with our families, our teachers have been had the opportunity to connect with you in some way, we know that communication will increase. Um, your cloud teacher is the primary facilitator for communication, uh, just like you would in a school. You, you typically would ask the teacher about this or that. And so that, that we wanted to have that similar framework. Uh, we also uh, will talk later about our cloud website that we'll continually be adding content to. And also one really key uh, important factor in being able to communicate uh, effectively because uh, if you, uh, with schools and everything, is that you keep and maintain um, updated, uh, whether it be a cell phone or a phone change or an email, your email addresses. Make sure that's an active email that you actively check because you're gonna receive a lot of information that way, um, and aside from maybe some um, other forms of communication like uh, uh, Remind or Dojo, that kind of thing. And then the last thing is that we all want to be patient in this process. We are not going to jump in on day one, right, right into all the academic content and everything. We're working to build our classrooms. And so part of that is building that relationship where you, where you know and see how much we, we really uh, love your student and want to help your student uh, succeed and grow. And so we ask that just make sure that we're all patient in this process. And there, when there are potential issues or concerns that we, we just take a moment to just try to address those and then know that we're going to do everything we can to fix that for you all and for, for our students. And so we, we just ask that we keep that, that patience and that, that knowing that everything is about your student. Everything we're doing is to, to support and help your student grow. And that's, that's the big piece for us in elementary and in uh, secondary uh, middle school, high school, uh, is that all of these things are major pieces in that. And um, as always, you know, if you have questions, please reach out to your, um, to your teacher. And then we will also be addressing the uh, Bullet Cloud Academy website uh, at the end of this. Uh, and from there, I think I will be, it will be transitioning over to Mr. Uh, Troy Cobb, our Director of Special Education. Good evening, and as with my colleagues, I thank you for joining with us tonight, listening to this, and in engaging with us as we uh, strive to provide this unusual and unique opportunity uh, for your students. Um, I have the unique privilege of myself of being the Director of Special Education here in Bullitt County, and um, four, four kind of big rocks that I've that uh, I thought would be nice to hit on tonight are the ones you see in front of you, instruction, related services, meetings, and questions. So first and foremost, instruction, we wanna to continue to provide the best instructional opportunities possible. Um, students receiving special education services will continue to receive those, inst those instructional and related services in the, the Cloud Academy. Special education and regular education teachers will be following and implementing students' IEPs. Um, special education teachers will continue to provide students with specially designed instruction, um, and they will continue to receive their appropriate accommodations and, in some cases, modifications um, that is necessary for them to participate in the learning activity. With regard to related services, um, Related services are those sort of specialized, uh, maybe even therapeutic opportunities that we offer to students. Um, these include things like speech, occupational therapy, physical therapy, and interpreting uh, services for our students who are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, students will continue to receive these related services as they're outlined on their IEPs uh, as they participate in the Cloud Academy. Um, while the majority of these service opportunities will take place online, um, as Ms. Usher was talking about before, there may be circumstances where in-person services uh, could be an option with, of course, strict adherence to CDC guidelines. Um, one, one very important aspect of special education is, um, of course, all the meetings that we have to have. Um, those meetings will still take place um, for students in the Cloud Academy. ARC meetings will be, will be held to conduct uh, annual reviews, 
discuss evaluation results and various other issues and concerns as necessary. Um, like with related service provision, the vast majority of these meetings will occur virtually, um, but in-person meetings may also still be possible, um, of course, again, by uh, sticking to the CDC guidelines. It is likely that an ARC will need to be held to review your student's IEP and to discuss how services will be implemented in the Cloud Academy. Um, as the need for meetings occurs, the ARC chairperson for your school will, will be in contact to schedule these. Or if you would like to schedule a meeting, you may also contact your school's ARC chairperson, or you could contact your student's special education teacher to let them know that you would like to have an ARC meeting. Uh, the last component there is where do you go for questions? And Mr. Durham hit on this a little bit uh, previously. Um, as we head into this new adventure of the Cloud Academy, you will have questions. Um, you'll have questions regarding your student special education services. Um, I encourage you, we encourage you to reach out to your special education teachers, uh, your students' caseload managers, um, and even their related service providers to let them help address your concerns. Your student's home assigned uh, ARC chairperson uh, may also be able to be of assistance. For our elementary folks, there is a um, dedicated ARC chairperson for each of those schools. In your secondary level, um, especially in the middle school, that uh, ARC chairperson is very often the assistant principal. And then for our high schools, um, there are um, ARC chair people um, that have that um, dedicated responsibility in each, of, in each of those schools as well. If you need additional assistance beyond this school level support, you can of course contact our department here at Central Office and uh, we'll be happy to help in any way that we can. So with that, I'll uh, turn it over, I believe, to Ms. Bramley Schomburg. Good evening, and again, as I reiterate, like everyone else, we apologize for the difficulties, but we thank you for your flexibility. And as we're all experiencing during this pandemic, the word flexibility. Uh, what I'm about to share with you for the secondary world, I'm gonna start with middle school and dive into high school. You're gonna hear a lot of similarities that Mr. Durham has already shared with elementary, and you're gonna hear that for the secondary. And the reason for that is, our entire purpose is twofold. We wanna make sure that we provide those social and emotional supports for our students, those wraparound services, and that's what we're gonna talk about, that community building. And then we're gonna help mitigate that learning loss that we've all experienced. And so that's where this is the great privilege that we have here in Bullock County, is we're not utilizing another program. We're utilizing our best teachers we have to help educate our students in Bullock, Bullock County Public Schools. Um, so what you'll see on the screen right here is we have our six middle schools and each one of them has a different unique thing that they bring to the table. Um, you'll notice that Bernheim and Bullet Lick is they had started talking about how to create a um, unity for the Central N, but after having conversations with specific programs at each of their schools, they decided to keep it a school within a school. As we shift over to Hebron and Zonton and Eastside and Mount Washington, what I'm here to share with you is they're doing those things. They're creating that community. So Hebron and Zonton has come up with their own little mascot for the Bullet Cloud Academy, the Wolverines, um, to help have those students feel like they're not only part of their homeschool, but also part of a joint community. And then with the East Side and Mount Washington, both them and Hebron are addressing the students. So the North End students are getting taught by Hebron teachers and Zonton teachers. They're still considered with their homeschool but they're being taught by those teachers in the North End. The same goes for the East End. East Side and Mount Washington teachers are going to be educating your child if you're in the East End. They have done tireless work together to make sure that it is not felt like a separate entity or a separate school, but they are still part of a community of learning. And I give my hats off to all of the teachers that have worked their tireless effort, and as Dr. Bacon said, for our counselors and our principals to make this work happen, because it is something different that we haven't experienced before. Um, as Mr. Durham shared with you, there's gonna be schedules. And within those schedules, um, we're gonna talk about routines. 
And why we keep bringing up routines is because we feel it's important to make sure there is a scheduled routine for our students. So for the middle school students, it will be between eight and three. For the high school students, it will be 720 to 210. And our purpose behind that is to make sure we've developed routines. As Mr. Durham has shared, students will not be on the computers the entire time. They're gonna have scheduled time for whole class meeting. They're gonna have scheduled time for small groups. They're gonna have scheduled time for one-on-one. -on -one. So again, things that you heard in the elementary world are the same that they're gonna experience in the middle and the high school world. So it's not that your child is gonna sit on a computer the whole time. They're also gonna have some independent work. They're gonna tap into other learning management systems such as IXL or Edgenuity, but those are not going to be the driving force. Those are gonna be supportive units to help the teachers to help your child. Um, the other piece that Mr. Durham mentioned that I'd also like to reiterate is communication. Communication is the key through this process of success. It, we're going into unknown territories. Within those unknown territories, reach out to your child's teacher. If that doesn't seem to work for your fancy, then I would suggest you reach out to your homeschool administrative team, whether that's the counselor or the assistant principal or the principal. And as Mr. Cobb said, we're always here to help and support. Um, the last piece, Mr. Durham talked about patience. I'm gonna ask for grace. And why I'm gonna say for grace in this component is that we are all going through these unchanted waters and we don't have a playbook for it. We have our best practices that we know are in place and we know that we have the best teachers that are surrounded by your children, which are the best kids that you provide for us. But at times we're gonna hit rocky roads and that's gonna be okay because we're gonna survive. So grace from us to you and from you to us. Um, and then Ms. Usher, if you don't mind shifting over to the high school schedules, we're gonna talk about the high school specifically. These are our high schools that we have here in Bullitt County. That hasn't changed. And so within that, as Ms. Usher pointed out before, um, there will be teachers that will be providing that online instruction. And depending on your child's pathway, and depending on the expectations with that specific pathway or that specific class, your child may need to come into the school for their additional hours or their additional supports that they need in order to complete that pathway. So they're gonna do the best that they possibly can to set it up with you. Um, how this is gonna work is for each of the high schools, it's gonna be a school within a school. So it will be, if you are at Bullet Central, you will have teachers from Bullet Central that will help you with your core, as well as your elective, as well as with your pathway classes. And again, as mentioned, you may have to come into the building depending on the class and depending on the teacher and what the structures and the expectations are with it. Why I keep bringing that up is because we have students from Bullet Central, Bullet East and North Bullet that are enrolled in the cloud that are also part of the Area Technology Center where we have phenomenal opportunities for our kids. Those particular pathways students will need to come in in order to make sure that they meet the expectations and the requirements because our ultimate job is to set up every kid for success beyond the four walls of K through 12 education. And we wanna make sure we continue to provide for that. Each school will work with your child. So again, reach out to your teachers in, in regards to communication, then to the counselors, and then to the administrative team for some support and help. Um, as mentioned with the middle school, the high school schedule as starts tomorrow, bright and early at 720, goes till 210. Please don't expect your child to be on a computer 720 to 210, but we are asking them to have that normal routine in place. And then we're gonna bridge those gaps to make sure that we have that mitigating learning loss and we have those social emotional supports. Um, my last piece of advice to everybody, whether you're elementary, whether you're middle or whether you're high, a key tool that we have is our Chromebook. If you have a parent have not picked up your Chromebook, please contact your school so that you can get that. That is a key piece of technology that will help bridge the gap in our virtual world with our Bullet Cloud Academy students. So again, if you have not picked one up yet, please contact your school because we wanna make sure that we're ready to roll. I understand school starting tomorrow, but we're still gonna to continue to build, but we just wanna make sure everyone has an equal access to their opportunities. Ms. Usher? Thank you, Ms. Bramlage. And parents, um, also, um, I, 
If you've not completed online registration, um, that is what no matter how, if your child was enrolled in our school district last year and even the year before and the year before, everyone has to complete online registration and you can find that on our district website. So please make sure um, you have that as well. Um, wanted to talk some more um, about the adult learning coach, which is part of the participation agreement. There will be a form that will be sent out uh, to our BCA families with this information in it. A lot of this information is information that you would see similar to first day of school paperwork uh, related to the techno acceptable use policy, um, the academic honor policy, the adult learning coach uh, component that we talked about earlier, the academic experience, which we had talked about that previously, and the commitment by BCPS. So this is information, I would encourage you to read it when it comes out in the Google form. We will need to have this completed per student. Uh, so if you have three children in your home that are participating in the Cloud Academy, this will need to be filled out per student um, in your uh, home. This form will also um, be asking information about the adult learning coach, that contact information, the name, uh, so teachers can also know uh, who, to, who can help, uh, who's available during the day if assistance is needed. We also have, um, I'm gonna let Mr. Durham talk about our Bullet Cloud Academy website. Uh, after this, we apologize, of course, for the technical diff difficulties. Um, that are out of our control tonight, um, but in an email we will send out this uh, recording along with the Cloud Academy website to you and that form, so you'll have all of that in one uh, location, but I'm going to let Mr. Durham talk about the Cloud Academy site and just what's on there. All right. Can you see, uh, hopefully, uh, thumbs up to make sure my screen is sharing correctly on the website. All right. So uh, we've been working really hard with our digital learning coaches to provide uh, a, a website in which that ultimately will be our one-stop shop for information. Uh, and that's, uh, that is our goal. And so on here, uh, uh, we, we intentionally have basically the initial help pieces and aspects for our cloud because we know that a lot of the concerns uh, that are uh, taking place right now are really coming from how do I get onto Seesaw? How do I get onto Google Classroom? Uh, for some that are new with uh, technology, how, to, how do I get on with Chromebooks? Uh, and what do I do with it? How do I log in? And so uh, we wanted to provide that uh, right off the bat on our initial um, uh, launch of this. So it's really focused on getting us going and we will continually add content to this website. Uh, so you'll see when you when you when we share this uh, this website address out, you'll be able to go and see our launch our launch page right here, um, and then you can choose if Chromebook is a question you have, Seesaw Google Classroom, or just some generalized frequently asked questions uh, that that's available to you right there on the home page. Um, eventually, that will go away uh, once we get further into the school year, and you'll be able to choose uh, what what mode of information you need, whether it be parents, student, or teachers. The student section is uh, not completed yet. That's, that's the piece that we held off on for right now until we get our students um, used to some of our components that we have in our classrooms. But what I'm going to talk about a little bit right now, and I won't go through everything, but some of the, uh, the main points under the, uh, the parent um, component. So when you go into our parent section, we will have content that kind of a framework of what cloud instruction will look like, generally speaking now. Please know that this is a general framework. This is not the specific framework that each classroom will have. Each classroom, especially when you're thinking about middle and high school, because of the different uh, content and, and pathways that students might be in, those could look very different. In elementary, we have a generalized framework uh, that we follow that each class, each school has to do what's best for their students and so and each, each classroom, so we're working on that. You'll notice links to our the reopening website uh, for information for Bullitt County Public Schools reopening uh, information. And we also include on here uh, the main component. The, the reason why we created this is for our parent resources. 
and also nutritional services to make sure that we have that available to you. And then we will be continually adding uh, content on the teacher contact information page. I'm going to uh, click on uh, two main areas. I'm click on the uh, nutritional services first. You'll notice in here that Bullitt County Public Schools has worked really hard. Uh, Mr. Krumbacher, uh, our nutrition services director, has really worked with his team to provide uh, multiple ways for our students to have meals, uh, to get a consistent meals, uh, warm meals for everybody and everything. So we have a curbside program and we have the bus, uh, the school bus food delivery program, both of which would need or required you to sign up for it if that's, if that is what you want. Um, and then, um, if you see, it might take around 48 hours to get to you. So make sure you visit that area. And then the other link that I really want to uh, point our attention to this evening is going to the resources help uh, for parent resource and help. Uh, if you click right here on the BCPS technology with the, our um, all the different words there on the screen, that takes you to our YouTube site for our, our digital learning coach uh, technology site, and it has. Uh, lots and lots of different videos to help us through a, a, a number of different situations on and to help us feel more comfortable with the technology that that we are incorporating into our classrooms. We want our parents and our students both to feel comfortable with the technology and we know that that, that comes with just getting used to it. So if you would like to uh, uh, get onto that YouTube site and then uh, look through the content that's provided there we also have specific um, sites dedicated for our young learners. Really, uh, you know, you're thinking about our K through two students that have not had a tremendous amount of access to consistent Chromebook usage. And then we also have our tech for middle school and high school. Uh, also, uh, uh, technology tips for our Chromebooks and how to take care of them and how to problem solve uh, or problem shoot uh, through some issues that you may have. Um, I won't go in depth, but I will definitely, um, this, would be, this is a, a page within our website that I would highly suggest our parents to to look at and knowing that we will be adding a lot of content as we go through um, another piece that we're, we're currently adding content is, is all of our con, uh, teacher contacts and so that we can provide their email names email addresses and their office hours that they'll be holding to make sure that um, parents have the ability to contact them if and when we need their assistance for anything um, uh, but uh, as we've said throughout, communication is really important. And I know that a website is not a one-on-one -on -one or person-to-person -person communication tool, but this can help you get through uh, some issues you may have in the evening time or something. If you if you were to send out an email, you could be uh, searching it and hopefully find some answers to your questions. We want you to communicate with your teachers, but please, please, we ask that you do look at our websites that we have, whether it be our Cloud Academy or our Bullitt County websites, to then find um, potential answers to your uh, to uh, some of the uh, concerns that you may have. Um, but that's our website. As I said, we'll continually be adding to that. Um, so check it regularly, and then we'll try to um, communicate as uh, specific topics may be brought up on those. But again, we thank you, and this we hope that this website will help you. And I'll, and I will turn this back over to Miss Usher after I stop sharing. There you go. Thank you. Um, last of all, we do really just want to thank you for your time. Um, we apologize once again for the technical difficulties uh, with Zoom and um, not connecting to YouTube. We will get this information out to you tonight. We will send that. We will post this on uh, Facebook so you will have access to this. If you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact your child's teacher um, or your homeschool if you have any questions. Um, and do not uh, forget to check out the Bullet Cloud Academy website for additional information. Uh, we appreciate your time tonight, and uh, like we said, do not hesitate to reach out at all.